Hello friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are still in chapter 4 and we are look, still looking in the techniques of black box test techniques. So we have few more to go at. We are on the third technique to talk about on the decision table testing. In the previous two tutorial we have already spoken about equivalence partition and boundary value analysis. You can quickly go back there and have a look on them if you are looking for uh, one among them to understand. Uh, the third technique to understand from the syllabus is decision table testing where generally it is a condition action table which you can see in the slideshow right now. There's a template here to make you understand that what exactly condition action table is. Where generally the truth table concept, those boolean operations like uh, comes into picture where a certain a gate will be applied and based on that the true false outcomes will be evaluated. So generally your application may invite a certain conditions what a user select before that operation happens. So generally user would may have two or three or four conditions and dependent on the selections of the conditions the necessary or relevant action would be taken or maybe offered to the user or customer. So generally what happens here as a part of decision table are certain scenarios what we come across. We instead of testing with anything else we have certain conditions to be fulfilled by the client. Then of course we create decision tables and then evaluate the number of test cases. Now in this case what you're looking right now is a condition action table which derives uh, to be having four test cases created out of two different conditions which a user can maybe offer or select from their end. Where condition 1 seems to be anything, condition 2 would be another thing added to the scenario. If both are true, something will happen. If one is true, one is false. Either way, there are different outcomes. And if both are false, there's another way of having the outcome on that. And this is what you list as actions. So generally, it is evaluated as yes or no, or true or false. And dependent on the number of conditions, you will be having a uh, you know the number of test cases being prepared on that. Let's quickly look at one of the examples to understand in a better way. So generally in examination you'll be provided with the table. You don't really have to prepare it because it's not going to be at K4, it's at K3. So here's a table giving you certain understanding about that if you're a member and having some type of room we have different offers for you. So generally what is that? is the expected result for each of the following test case and the test case are written below. A. Citibank card member holding a silver room. So if you see here Citibank card member it must be yes and that's rule one and rule two and second part is holding a silver room that's rule one and uh, so what should happen with him? Of course offer upgrade to gold luxury and I think we have the last option here which says offer upgrade to gold and uh, that's a monopoly we do not have any other option competing with it so anyways uh, we don't expect any such things anymore it's just limited to that so the b option here non city bank member holding a platinum room which generally uh, goes to the rule for where uh, no and platinum is there and uh, it's just to make sure that there is no offer updated or upgraded to the person on using the rule for. So if you see the last option again, B size do not offer any upgrade. So even if you get the partial thing uh, correct, you do not you know keep or rely on them. The reason is you never know how the things the second part would change because nowadays ISTQB from the new syllabus is very tricky. They can always twist your answer at any point of time and I would love to look out some of the questions from there at the end of this chapter. So pay attention to that. So that's the right answer, the last one. Let's look at another example on the same thing that given the following decision table which of the following test cases and expected result is valid. Where we say that uh, there are certain rules and there are some age, insurance and multiple actions again. So if you see here I've got all you have to do in this case is take the options and put it on the table and justify that which one is giving you the right output. For example, first option here says 23 year old in an insurance class A. That means it is uh, rule 2 where 21 to 29 is considered. So, okay, A or B of course and premium is 90, correct, but the access is 2500. Now this is what actually is the right answer where you're getting in the first option itself that everything goes as per the rule 2. But if you look at B, C, D, let's start with B. 51 year old, that means uh, it's going to be rule 4. 
And in class C, okay, C or D is there. Premium is 100? No, it is 70. So it's ruled out. C, uh, 31 year old, that is rule 3. Class is B, of course, and premium is 70, correct. But the excess is, no, it's not 2500, it's 500 in rule 3. Similarly, the D, 43 years old, which fall under rule 3 again. Class is C, premium is 100. No, premium is not 100, it's 70. So that makes it sure that uh, the right answer is A. But even if you know the answer uh, in the very first option, we still recommend that you cross-check the other options to be double sure about your right answer. Now, that makes you sure that, okay, fine, this one mark belongs to my score. And you can even understand that how many things can be wrong because you never know when ISTQB twists their options to separately or different manner. So... You never take a chance. You cross-check all the options before you finally mark your right answer. So anyways, team, that was, I think it was really interesting to understand decision table here with me. In case you have any queries, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you. In case you have not subscribed, there is an icon on the right side. You can just click on that and subscribe to the channel. I'll be getting back to you with another tutorials on ISTQB with more techniques and more concepts on testing all about. So stay tuned for upcoming tutorials. Until then, keep learning and exploring about testing and a STQB examination. And I'll be back with another tutorial soon. Thanks for watching the video team. Take care.